there. And heading up there. Oh, okay. okay. Thanks to the support crew. <laughs> we will see you soon. <laughs> on, on. On, on. <laughs> and off we go. Morning of day 14. Day 14. We're heading out of uh, dwelling up. Uh, we had a zero day yesterday, day off. Great little trail town, this one. They've got heaps of bike tracks around, um, a lot of walking. And I've just done up their visitor centre. Yeah, done a really, really good job. Good weather today. Only going up to about 23 or so. 13k to Oak Swamp campsite. Um, full pack again. We've got six days worth of food. Um, although we've had some really, really good rest and a couple of good feeds at the pub. So, um, yeah, on on. Day 14? Yeah. Day 14. Back on track. Out in the forest. Feeling great. You can tell my pack's full because it's sitting up high. But mostly, how he gets the extra weight, really. My pack starts slightly heavier than his, and his fluctuates a lot more. So. He takes most of the food. I've got the breakfast and the coffee and the hydrolite. <laughs> right, on on. I'm glad I wasn't standing underneath it when it happened. This is new. Oh, yeah. We just have to just take a look. Take a little Bushmash. walk around. Yeah, she's a big jarret tree. And that's just come down very, very recently. Which way are we going over that way? Let's check out what um, how he almost stood on. Oh, I'd be very grateful he didn't. What a lovely beastie. Guana. Yeah, I was uh, off in my own little world there, walking along and um, I genuinely almost stepped on him. We we'll stopped for a break and we got something. We've got something special here. We've got Judy from the support team has made us curried egg sandwiches. <laughs> I came off the Cape to Cape Trail looking for curried egg sandwiches and couldn't find any. So I've had to wait, walk 200 odd K on the Bibbleman for a curried egg sandwich. Ah, the pines, the pines. I ever mention that I like walking through pine forests? In the pines, in the pines, where the sun don't ever shine, I would shiver the long No, no. Oh, he's padding along. There he is. Yeah. I've got to say, though, that sandwich. The highlight of our culinary experience. In <laughs> There's the master chef <laughs> who made that sandwich. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Eating it already. Yeah. We had it at Here comes Bob we had it at and his support crew, <laughs> Brian and Judy. Yeah, nice. 
easy little walk in today first day back on trail uh, mild sort of weather a couple of real highlights of the day obviously that egg sandwich oh, just walking through the pines love walking through pines don't know what it is in particular maybe I used to be a pine tree in a previous life or something <laughs> if you're at the Swamp Oak campsite, a little short walk down to the Murray River, excellent little swimming hole beautiful little spot down there and so just head out of the campsite uh, turn right let's head down the four-wheel drive track go past the metal gate turn right follow that road down not far maybe 100 meters or so you'll cross another road but you'll be able to hear the water by then and you'll see a little track heading down the other side Uh, good morning, day 15, leaving uh, Swamp Oak campsite, heading to Murray, probably about 18 kilometres and uh, it's not getting too hot as well so it should be a great little day. Walking on an old railway formation. It's lovely and flat, the cutaways, and you can see how the bank has been built up on the side. It's a really nice aspect looking down to where Swamp Oak Brook flows. Uh, likely it's ephemeral and not actually flowing right now, as is the case for most creeks and brooks. These kind of waterways only really flow when it rains consistently or very heavily. Big thank you to the maintenance workers who clear the path for us when there are obstacles. Well, just got into Murray camp. Um, good day, but did get a bit hot, 19 kilometers. Sort of one of those days that um, just sneaks up behind you, gives a good 
good kick in the ass actually. We can see the Murray River down in there. We'll go and check that out later. Yeah, time for a wash. <laughs> yeah, anyone coming southbound from Perth, just the last kilometre or so, some serious sort of uphills and downhills, very short and sharp. You think you're here, but you're not. <laughs> okay, just keep going. And um, yeah, beautiful spot though. It's it gonna be great. Appear. Yeah, it yeah. Appear. Anyway, off to the drone shot. Damp on the floor, soft underneath. Sun breaking through a little bit. Nice green tunnel. Sometimes I think to myself, oh, this feels like an adventure. And then I remember that it is. Little birds flitting in and out of the thicket. Oh, here's an obstacle. Where we go? Hurry up, up. Hurry up, up. Hoi hoi, folks. We got a uh, beautiful little morning this morning, hugging the uh, hillside here, up above the Murray River. I'm just cruising along, heading to Dukanelli. Uh, about a 19k walk. Temperature's going to pick up a little bit today. It's going to get up to about 25 or so. Um, so we should be. Getting close to about 250k by the end of today. So we're roughly about a quarter of the way already. Forgot the other things I was going to talk about, so we might cut this short. See ya. Whoa. Ooh, now that, ladies and gentlemen, was the rare call of a Bob Holland. Um, Latin also, name. Latin name. Localist. Localist. Legendous. And the powers of my childhood, once more I will see. Never more will I roam, for I'm heading straight home. home along the along road, the road to, to Gundagai. By the kind of bold from horses that I've rode. In the salt bush and the sand, I've got this rock and sail seat. Da 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 da. They live in the never never land. Hey. I never travel down to all your high class towns. Because I'm right where I am. I'll come to the town, down the pub and general store. The use of any more. Away out in the never never land. Here, this fellow is a white tail cockatoo. Now, 
I'm not sure if he's a carnaby or a borden. Or she. But, um. Got a pretty little voice. There he goes. Compared to the Karaks, they're a bit more tuneful. The Karaks are the red tails, the ones that say Karak, Karak. Well, what the bush has been making me think about is transience and change, impermanence, not the least of which is evoked by the ephemeral creeks that we cross that right now are dry or thinking about the ever-changing flora that we're passing and in amongst all this change and all this impermanence here are we and in a very human way we attach ourselves to our routines we control what we can we try to get a grip on things while the environment around us is ephemeral and changeable. And that maybe is something worth thinking about this year in particular, as we let go of things that we thought were certainties. And it turns out they're not. Just took a little side quest off the uh, Bibbleman from about 300 meters. Went down to a little bridge crossing um, over the Murray River. Um, had a little snack, the feet in the water, all those sort of things. Had a wash. Had a wash. Saw a goanna on the way back. Um, yeah. It's been a pretty good day so far. So I'm warming up a little bit now. We've got about three and a half k to go to camp, and um, then just look at this bush we're walking through. Afternoon, welcome to Ducanelli campsite, and we're here today with Bob Holland, Harry Gaskin, a cameraman. Oh. And me, your presenter, Kath Norcross. We're here for the special prize giving uh, after the, the mystery set by our former companions and now off adventuring elsewhere. Before we look at the prize, let's talk about what our guesses were. Um, how we guessed? Uh, I guessed uh, it was chocolate, but I just wanted more chocolate. And I suggested a muesli bar or breakfast bar. And I thought it would be kangaroo poo. There you go. <laughs> nice dried kangaroo poo. <laughs> Thinking along different lines. All right, so here it is. The Great Unbelling. The prize. The prize. I don't think it's kangaroo poo. All right, I'm on the back. Here it says, there's a, a can of emu. Um, like the one that was placed for us. Ticks for the a little tick for the tick magnet and a tree and a smiley face. It's a um, muesli bar, pretty much it's a yogurt. There you go. <laughs> hey Bob! The winner! The winner. The winner. Oh. <laughs> Welcome to the tent. I don't know if you can hear them, but there are March flies everywhere. I don't mind coming inside the tent right now and um, it's time to set up the beds.
and that's home. That's our wee little home. So we've got a, uh, a hot day and about 23 kilometres tomorrow. So uh, we've set an alarm to get an early start. I got on. It was Kath's suggestion, so... <laughs> Because walking in the heat is worse than waking up in the dark. Morning, 4.30. It's really quiet. Quarter to six and we are off. Um, the rest of camp's not too far behind us, probably. Maybe another 10 minutes or so. Bob's gonna catch us up on the trail. Uh, what are we, morning 17? 17, yeah. 17 for us, 19 for Bob. And, um, yeah, uh, we'll put in, the, put in the early morning effort to try and beat the heat. It's gonna hit somewhere between 30 and 32, someone else told us on one stage. Um, chilly now. Chilly. It's chilly, it's bro. Um, a, a few, a few little, oop, probably got blinded by the sun there. Um, a few little events on today. We get to go across a bridge. <laughs> um, might get Dronathon out there, we'll see. But well, we've heard it's a highly rated bridge. Highly rated. From our compatriots. Jennifer. Uh, <laughs> Jennifer. <laughs> um also Oh the uh, there's a mining conveyor conveyor belt that we get to walk under. Apparently is I hear it off in the distance last night. It's a bit noisy. Low rumble. Yeah. But anyway, I suppose that'll feature. And um, and plenty of bush. And nice light. Etc. Out here in the Lane Pool Conservation Area, one is sometimes privileged to a glimpse of that elusive creature, the local legend. And it is, of course, Camberang season, the cessation of the rains bringing with it the onslaught of flies and March flies. Now, this creature has quite cleverly devised a protection against this onslaught, and so we see the local legend in full plumage and benetted. It is a wonder, a wonder of nature. We've just had a interesting last hour or so. Um, temperatures climbing, coming out into some sort of open canopies and stuff here, so not much shelter going on. Oh no, I'm just about to turn off. We might get some shade. Awesome. Um, we did, we ended up walking through 
we're having to walk through our motocross section which sort of paralleled down by the river and I'm not sure why the little track doesn't the bib track doesn't go and skirt along the river there I'm sure the motocross guys don't like us being on their track and we don't like them being on our track and whatever I don't know might cut that out uh, found another tick on Bob and pretty soon we get to walk under this conveyor belt the mining conveyor belt you may be able to hear the noise in the distance. Hold on. Yeah, I don't know. It's all a little bit hot and dusty at the moment. Maybe the low point so far, but uh, you know, all we've got to do is keep walking. We'll get better eventually. We've found out recently that the collective noun for a group of wildflowers is a rave. Who would have known? A rave of wildflowers. What a day. Um, it was long, hot, flies, ticks, motocross riders, big noisy conveyor belt thing. Yeah. Really glad we left uh, an hour earlier than we normally do. So we'd still have another hour of this to go. Um, it's cooling down again tomorrow, so we should be should be okay. And uh, cooling down for a little bit after that. And maybe a 34 degree day coming. So we may take an extra rest day in Collie. Uh, but we'll see how that all goes. Time to rest. Uh, Pop's a bit tired this Arvo and he's uh, taking the lying down method of putting up his tent. <laughs> <laughs>